Good morning, AF family. Happy Sunday, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey, count it. Seven. This is our seventh Sunday that we are sharing online services. I couldn't remember, and so we had to look it up. Pastor Melinda reminded me that it was seven weeks in a row now we've been sharing online services. But you know what? I, I think about these times of change, and I think about people around the world. You know, many people, even before Corona, mm -hmm. were meeting in, in uh, secret places. Sure. They were meeting in closed doors in certain countries where they can't preach the gospel. Sure. People in Africa are meeting out in open-air tabernacles. So, you know, it, it's not about where we meet. Yes. It's why we meet. Yes. And it's it's the fact that not what do we do, but, but what does God promise to do when we meet together? So today, I'm excited that on this Lord's Day, God promises to be with us. Amen. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great Sunday, everybody. And we do miss you. We miss seeing you, hugging you. We miss dancing in the front of the church together. Mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, baby dedications. We miss baby dedications. Yeah, those, those things wonderful times. that we can't do right now. But just as Pastor said, we are still worshiping the Lord as right. a church. We are still growing in our faith as a church. Amen. And we're sharing it with others. And that's so important. So today we're going to have opening prayer. We're going to have a time yes. of worship. Brother Henry's going to lead us in worship. We want to say thank you to Brother Henry. I think Brother Clement, Sister Iffy, helped with worship yes. a few weeks ago. So thank you so much. And then, of course, last week, Brother Andy's family. What amazing. an amazing job. Thank you, guys. So All good. of you. Thank you so much yes. for your ministry to us, leading us in praise and worship last yes. week. And we look forward to them doing that again. But yes. today, Brother Henry's going to lead us in worship. And then Pastor Joseph's going to preach in a few minutes. Um, we're going to just to have a great day. And Amen. so let's put aside all distractions. Yes. Let's share the link. How can they do that today? Right. You guys know right there on Facebook as you're watching, just share the link to your page, share it to a friend's page, send it to them in a message. Um, because it's amazing to see how the, ex um, the expansion of the church right. and our influence is just being felt in so many places. You're Friends, your family yes. are able to be a part of service with us now. And we want that to continue. We do. We do. So it's going to be a full day. I forgot, of course, we're going to have give and greet. And we yes. love reading the comments of greeting yes, from the Henderson exactly. family, greeting from Nigeria, greetings from District 12, District 3. Yes. And so today we'll ask you to do that as well. That's right. Uh, as Pastor Francis will lead in time of prayer, and then that will follow, be followed by give and greet. I want to ask you, please be faithful with your tithes and offerings, everybody. Last week we had one... Uh, offering from the African Fellowship. And this week uh, yes. is our is the first Sunday of the month. It's yes. a time where all of us have received something and we should yes. be faithful to give it to the Lord. So you can That's bring right. that by the church on Wednesday we or on Saturday. Yes, on Saturday. Wednesday, Wednesday or Saturday, Saturday. Bongasa or Renvig, between the hours of 1 o'clock in the afternoon and 5 o'clock. That's yes. 1,300 and 1,700 hours on yes. Wednesday or Saturday. But this week, come on, let's be faithful to God, everybody. It's so important that during this time, we're, we're, we're praying about big things. I Amen. mean, we're praying about a new facility yes. that God may lead us into um, to purchase. And yes. we'll share more about that when we come back together. But it takes finances and it takes us being faithful to God as well as God being faithful to us. Amen. So today, everybody, let's give our best. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Give our best in worship, in giving, in receiving the yes. word in yes. prayers, and everything in we do. So come on right now. Would you pray with us? Amen. As we lead you in prayer. God Amen. bless you. Let's dedicate this Sunday to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Our Father, you are on the throne thank today. You. We thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you. Lord, from the onset of this service, we dedicate the time of worship, of praise, of giving. God, we dedicate the time of greeting each other, of the preaching of your word. Father, we say take every part of it and be glorified. Father, we thank you. May, may the words of our mouth today, may they edify the Lord. Father, may your presence be felt in our homes. May there be an anointing of your spirit. Father, may you see our faithfulness. May we prove our faithfulness to you today. And may we see the abundance of your blessings upon us and of our households. Be glorified in our worship and in every aspect of the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is joy, joy, joy in the presence of the Lord. Sing me hallelujah, amen. There is joy, oh yeah, oh yeah. There is joy, oh yeah, oh yeah. I lost 
Seated upon the throne. He is seated upon the throne, church. It is good that we come to him in reverence, in awe, because our God is seated on the throne. Oh, let's give him praise, let's give him worship today. Oh, yes, Lord, you remain God. You are strong. Open our eyes to see you, O oh God, in the beauty of your holiness. See you in your majestic glory. See you seated, seated upon your throne. Yes, seated upon your throne. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Church, this time we want to pray. We just want to pray. We want to um, commit ourselves to God as we continue in the service. I don't know if you have your Bibles there. Let's turn to uh, Psalms, Psalms chapter 34. Psalms 34, and we read from verse 17. Psalm 34, verse 17. The Bible says that the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles, all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Not one of them will be broken. We are going to stop there. This verse of scripture is for you and I today talking about the righteous. I don't know what you may have gone through through the week. I don't know what you may be passing through. The whole world may be going through trouble. The righteous also goes through trouble. That is what the Bible says here. It says the righteous. It says the righteous cry out unto God. God hears them. And so as we cry out today unto our God, know that God hears us. And if he does hear us, yes, he will deliver us. From all our trouble. So let us open our mouth and just talk to God this time. Let's ask that He will deliver us. He will deliver us. He will deliver us from the pestilence that is all around us. He will del deliver us from everything that we are going through. 
that is in the form of trouble. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's talk to God now. Talk to God. Talk to God. Open your mouth and talk to God. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Deliver us, O oh God. Deliver us from the pestilence. Deliver us from the arrows that move in the day or in the night. Deliver us, O oh God, from every cost that is flying in the air. In the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke every power that is against us. We rebuke every sickness that is in the air. We rebuke every attack of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that your will will come to play. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, because you hear us. Thank you, Lord, because you deliver us. Thank you because you are close to the brokenhearted, those that are contrite in their spirit. Lord, we come humbly before you, God. We come for the refreshing, the refreshing, the refreshing that comes only through you. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this hour. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. You see, we have just read. It says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saved those who are crushed in the spirit. It's possible that you have lost a loved one, or you have heard about your friends who are going through one thing or the other as a result of this uh, coronavirus. But let let us know that God is close to you. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not passing through this alone. He is carrying you through. May the presence of God be with you. Let's ask this hour. The Bible says that they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so we will say of the Lord that He is our God, our refuge, our strong tower. In Him we will trust. If that is the case, His presence will see us through all we are going through. Oh yes, we just ask for your presence, Lord. Even through this coming week, even through these days, we ask that your presence will overshadow us and overwhelm us. We ask for the overflowing of your presence and of your anointing. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you will carry us through this time, through this age. In the mighty name of Jesus, we, we ask that your presence will increase in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that this time will be a time, uh, yes, that we will draw closer to you. We will seek you uh, and we will find you as we seek you with all of our heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that your name be glorified. Thank you for our entire family in Jesus' name. We are going to pray like we have said for all our members, uh, uh, all of us, all those that have lost their loved ones this time. We just want to pray that they be comforted. We want to pray that they will experience the presence of God. I remember our brother, Osarobo, he lost the, the junior brother that is in the island to coronavirus. We want to just pray for that family and every family all across the globe, all around the world, uh, that have been taken away by reason of this uh, virus. In the name of Jesus, let them be comforted. Let the hands of God be upon them. In Jesus' name. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Oh, Liba Seribo Shata Yaraba Liba Seriba. Liba Seribo Shata Yaraba Liba Kaba 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 Kaba. Yes, be comforted, be comforted, be comforted. In the name of Jesus, be comforted, be comforted. In the name of Jesus, be restored. In the name of Jesus, be restored. In the name of Jesus, be restored. In Jesus' name, be restored. Be comforted. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Before we go today, it's possible that you are on your sick bed. Look, I tell you that there is power in the blood of Jesus. If we can believe, we can be healed. The Bible says that we have asked nothing either to ask in the name of the Lord. Ask in my name, Jesus says. You will receive. And so if you are on your sick bed, I want you to stretch out your hands to the screen, wherever you are watching from. And, and by faith, receive your healing now. Receive your healing. It's possible you are sick in any part of your body. It may not be coronavirus. You are having pains in any part of your body. You lay your hands right there on the spot. You are sick. Lay your hands on your head. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Just lay your hands. By faith we pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus. By your stripes we were healed. By your stripes we were healed. And so we receive healing for everyone that is sick among our members, even now, 
in Jesus' name. Yes, we receive healing in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, we are healed. Yes, we are restored. Yes, we are alive again. Yes, we are resurrected. Yes, there is joy. Yes, there is hope. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, thank you so much, Pastor Francis, for leading us in prayer today. Hey, as we move into time of give and greet, this is a blessing time. It's a time for us to give to God what belongs to God. So I want to encourage you on this first Sunday of the month, everybody, as we have give and greet, let's be faithful to the Lord. Please remember, you can go to our vcc.veen or viennachristiancenter.at, the website. Click on online giving and you'll see information there to make a bank transfer or, of course, to give through PayPal. Click on the PayPal link. You can use your Bancomat card, your, your Visa credit card, uh, any kind of card you can use there as well. But don't forget, most importantly, those who all of us who give cash, you can bring that by the church office, uh, either either Bangas campus or Renvig campus on Wednesday or Saturday between 1 a.m. and 1 a.m., 1 p.m. in the afternoon and 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So between 1,300 hours and 1,700 hours. But let's be faithful to God as he has been faithful to us. Friends, I'm telling you, in this moment, God wants to do amazing things to us. So it's so important that you and I are faithful to the Lord in these days. We love you. We're praying for you. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness and mercy. Pray that you continue to bless the African Fellowship, the VCC family, as we are faithful to you. Lord, we pray for those who really are struggling with this area of submitting every area of their life to you, including their finances. Lord, help them today to, to know that you are a faithful God. And as we are faithful to you, you always are faithful to us. Lord, would you bless the tithes and offerings that are given today online, the bank transfers, and those who come by and give during the week as well. We pray your richest blessings, Lord, upon all of us as we serve you so that we can be a blessing to you, to the kingdom of God, and to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give and greet everybody. While we're doing this, make sure you send us a little message as you're watching this video. Let us know where you're watching from. Hello from Henderson's. Hello from District 22. God bless you guys today.
So you are welcome to, to this service. Thank you for being with us online. Uh, we thank God for the whole of the week and the week will be very uh, powerful. And uh, I'm going to exhort today on what I titled Overcoming Season of Storm. In this part of the world we are today, there are four seasons, four different seasons. We have uh, the season of autumn, in autumn, when we see trees start sharing their leaves, we know that it is autumn. In winter time, when we see trees, they are without leaves and it is very cold. And we know that it's winter. In springtime, we see trees that we start having leaves. Leaves, we start, young leaves, we start coming up. Crops, we start coming up with little flowers. We know that is spring. And in summertime, we look at the tree. The trees are full with gray leaves and with fruits, flower everywhere. Everywhere look beautiful. We know that is summertime. Season never stays. Season go and season comes. It is never a permanent. There is no time we have a permanent season. There are different seasons. In the word, the word of God says nothing is permanent except God and his promises. In Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 1, he says to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose on the earth. In everything in this world, there is season. Mm -hmm. It cannot stay. No matter how cold a winter is, summer is coming. You know, no matter how dark a night is, day is coming. In other words, whatever you are going through in life today, it is just for a season. It is not going to stay. Whatever that is happening in your life today, have it in mind that it is not going to stay. It's just for a season. You cannot say it is winter time and you pack all your summer clothes and set them off. No, you still keep them because summer is still coming. Season gives hopes. In season, in season, you have hope that this season you are, there is going to be another season. If you don't have a job today, if you are unemployed, it's just for a season. Don't lose hope. Better job is coming. Amen. If you are sick, don't lose hope. God will put healing upon you. You will be strong again. It's just for a season. When you, in your bank account, sometime before the middle of the month, you are broke. It doesn't mean when you are broke, you have to go and close up your account. No, it is just for a season. Season is never permanent. There is no condition in the, on, this, on this world that is permanent. It comes and it goes. Sometimes I feel sorry. When I hear some people, I read in newspaper that people commit suicide. It is lack of knowledge. Because they take a temporary condition to be a permanent condition. No. You don't take a temporary condition to be a permanent condition. It's just for a season. Mm -hmm. The key to life is outstanding the season. That is the key to our life. You just have to reorganize yourself again. When we look at the book, 1 John 
1 John 5, 4. The word of God says, whatever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. He just has said today, nothing remains the same. Winter never stays. Spring never stays. Summer never stays. Autumn never stay. They come and go. Mm-hmm. Season is always temporary. It's a temporary. It's never permanent. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tribulation never permanent. Tribulations are never permanent. They are seasonal. Mm-hmm. Let us open to the book of John. John 16, 33. The book of John if I summarize, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But fear not, I have overcome the world. As long as we are in this world, we will have tribulation. There will be storm. But God has overcome the world. Since he made, he made the kingdom people to live in faith. We belong to the kingdom. We don't belong to the world. We belong to the kingdom of God. Kingdom people think differently. When the world says fear, we say faith. The word of God says, fear not, for Christ has overcome the world. Fear not, for Christ has overcome the world. God will never fear his people. But you have to make sure that you are his people. The world leaders may fail you. Your brothers may fail you. Your sister may fail you. Even your own father will fail you. But God will never fail you. Whatever you are passing through is for a season. It is seasonal. It's a strong, it's a storm. The world is not full of milk and honey. Sometimes it is very sweet. But sometimes there are storms you pass through. But don't give up. Don't give up. Stand still. Stand. The word of God says stand still and see the salvation of God. Leader all are the what we are, what the present situation we are now. Leader all over the world. They are confused. They are they are run short. Of ideas. They are bankrupt of ideas. They don't know what to do. When the smartest does not know what to do, you have to focus on the one that is smarter, which is God. We have to focus on God. He will never fail his people. He will never fail you. In Exodus chapter 14, 13 to 14, Exodus chapter 14, 13 to 14. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians you, whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Egyptian you see today, say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Mm-hmm. No problem you are going through today. When you focus on the Lord, no focus on the leaders, no focus on anybody, you will see that that problem you will see no more. God will eradicate your problem in the mighty name of Jesus. He will eradicate your problem. God will not save you from the, st- from the storm. But he will save you in the storm and through the storm. Hallelujah. We are in the storm today. It is not that the storm is coming. We are already in the storm. But the only mechanism of survival is the kingdom principle, which is to stand, to build on this foundation of Christ. It doesn't mean that you are in Christ that you will not experience storm. You will see a spirit storm, 
Because Tom does not discriminate between houses. He passed through the houses. The Bible says, sun will shine on everybody. It will shine on the wicked and it will shine on the righteous. You will see a spirit sun, but it will not consume you. He said you will, be no, you will not be washed away because you have foundation in Christ. And your foundation in Christ is deep. Praise the Lord. Amen. There is nothing that takes God by surprise. Sometimes God allows uncertainty to happen. Whether it is good or in your opinion it is bad. Sometimes he allows it to happen to test your faith. Sometimes he allows it to happen to correct your ways. He allows it to happen. Praise the Lord. That is God we serve. One thing we storm, it is only moving. It never stops. It is only moving. The condition you are today, it will move away. Hurricane cannot stop. It comes and it goes away. Don't lose hope. Don't be despair. Because light is coming again. Your joy is coming again. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says, when you, when God is for us, who will be against us? Praise the Lord. When storm comes, it uproot trees. Some trees you know that is that, 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 that look good outside, but the inside is rotten. It uproot them. Mm -hmm. It uproot houses. It destroys houses. Those houses that do not mean to the beauty code. It will uproot them. It will uproot them. Mm -hmm. As I said before, it doesn't mean that when you are in Christ that you will not experience storm. Storm does not, it does not discriminate between houses. It uproots everyone. Mm -hmm. But the question, are you rooted in Christ? Did you meet to that beauty code? To the kingdom principle? Mm -hmm. Did you meet up to it? Praise the Lord. Seize the guarantee changes. As I said before, every season, there are seasons, but it guarantee changes. No matter what, season guarantee changes. Sometimes God allows darkness in your life before he pushes you to light. He changes it. He changes. He allowed it before he pushes you to the light. It doesn't mean that you will be in that darkness forever. As the word of God say, nobody has immunity to crisis. It affects everybody. It affects everybody. And it brings everybody to the same level. That is crisis. Whether young, old, black, white. You know, whether you are male or female. It brings everybody to the same level. I believe that. There is something that God wants to teach every nation. Through this crisis. You know, crisis built community. It brought it built up unity, built solidarity, humanity, and empathy. Crisis build bring sensitivity. It made people to be simple again. It brings people together to find solution. To the common problem that affects everybody we are today. Our leaders, you know, they cannot stand for you the way your God will stand for you. Leaders, especially from the third world, there is something that God wants to teach us through this crisis we are experiencing today. If you are from Africa, you know quite well the hospitals in Africa, they are lack of equipment. There is no the medical equipment we have there, they are so outdated. Medication, medi medication is not sufficient. When you go to the hospital, if you are not careful, 
When you go with one infection, you may come back with another, with second, with, with two infections. You see patients sleeping on the floor. They sleep on the floor because there is no bed for them. That is the condition of the Africa in, in, in hospitals in Africa. When the leaders are sick or members of their family that are sick, they flew abroad for medical treatment, which the common people cannot do. But now that there's a shutdown, everybody you have to remain in your country. You have to make use of what you have in your country. There is no more flying overseas to receive medical treatment. It will teach their leaders sense that whatever God, God placed in your hand, you are to have value to it. You don't consume it. You have value to it. So as I said before, there are going to be changes in what we are experiencing now in the whole world. There are going to be changes in economical strategy, in the economic strategy of the world. There are going to be changes in the health system all over the world. It is not going to remain the same. That is what it will be in mind. We should not be despair. We should not lose hope. Because God is with human beings. We don't know what we are doing. Neither don't know what they are doing. But God knows what he is doing. God, our God we serve, he knows what he is doing. There is something he wants to teach us. There is something he wants us to know. In what is going on today. If the devil ever knew. That by bringing Christ to the cross will lead to human salvation. He won't have tried it. He won't have tried it. Do you know that today now, in most of the hospitals and labs all over the world, I sent a video uh, some time ago uh, to some of the uh, VCC members. Or what is happening now in the hospital and in the labs? The, most, of, the, most of the authorities, they are not allowed their staff to come to their conference room to praise and seek the protection of our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. before they send it to their station to work. Before, that does not happen. It's not happened before. They don't allow it. Because of other people that had different religion. Mm. Because other people that had different beliefs, they don't allow it. But now it is allowed in most of the hospitals. So we so thank God that things are going to change. Things are not going to remain the same. Praise the Lord. We are already in the storm. It is not that the storm is coming. Praise the Lord. Let us open uh, to the uh, book John. John chapter 13, the book of John chapter 13, uh, I will read from verse 33, John 13. The word of God says, this thing I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In the world, we may have tribulation. Yes, we may have tribulation. What we are going on, what we are going through now. But the Lord has over, over, uh, overcome the world. We should not have fear. But we should rely and depend on God. Praise the Lord. So what we are going through today, it is going to come to pass. He said, it may come to pass. It came to pass. But we are durable. We are strong. We are stronger than the wind. Because our foundation is in the Lord. Our foundation is in the Lord. When we open even the, 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 the quarantine we are talking about, it is not new. It is in the Bible. When we open to the Isaiah, Isaiah the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 26, verse 20, prophet Isaiah as the people, as the nation of Israel, to show themselves inside their home for some time, for a period of time, until the anger of God is over. Until the anger of God is over. Mm -hmm. We don't lose hope. The kingdom people, we don't lose hope. 
We should not be anxious for anything at all. We should not be anxious. We should not be afraid. Mm -hmm. According to Philippians 6, according to this now, chapter 4, verse 6, he said, be anxious for nothing, but in all things you must pray. Because nothing is permanent. We must pray. We should not be anxious. We should not take a permanent decision in a temporary condition. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have to be faithful. We have to be faithful to God. Amen. We have to be faithful in everything that we have been doing ever since. Do not be anxious for anything. There should be no anxiety. You will not be fear of what is coming. Because everything we get to an end, it will change accordingly. According to what I just read now in James, the word of God says, we should not be anxious. And in, in Philippians, God of God says we should not be anxious. And in James, James says that we should be faithful in all things. James chapter 2, verse 20, it says, We that faith without work is dead. Faith without work is dead. Mm -hmm. We should be the people. That God called us to be. We should be. Take part in what God is doing on earth. In what God is doing in the kingdom of God. In, in his kingdom on earth. We should not give up. Those things we have been doing before. We should be faithful to it. We should be faithful in our tithes. We should be faithful in our giving. In our offering. We should be faithful in them. We should still be. Taking part in what God is doing on earth today. Even in the middle of the storm, we should not give up. We should be a partaker of what God is doing on earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do not throw off your confidence in God. Because he that began a good thing in your life, he will truly bring it to an end. Never you throw up. You are confident in the Lord. Because God is faithful. He is faithful. He will be faithful to you to the end. Never you take a permanent decision in a temporary environment, in a temporary condition. Do not be afraid or despair. The Lord God will fight your fights. The Lord God he will fight your battle. Mm -hmm. He will see us through in every difficult situation. Thank you for joining us today in this service. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for listening to the word of God. Mm -hmm. I know that God is going to, do, going to do a great thing in our life. And God is going to see us through. Mm -hmm. May the peace of the Lord be upon you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. So please join us to... Uh, share the word of God and join us to uh, say our closing prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, help us to be the people. And the church you have called us to be. The people who always build up. And never tear down. Who always encourage. And never discourage. A people and a church who take a message of hope everywhere we go to everyone we meet in Jesus' name.